Hello you and welcome to some kind of fox content and welcome back to First Snow, the visual novel that we are doing here for the holiday episodes. And uh, with every beat of our heart thumping away in the background here, we move closer to Christmas. Meaning we have only today and tomorrow left to finish this story. Um, so we gotta get a move on. Uh, this episode might be a bit longer than the rest of them, simply so we can wrap this, th this thing up. Now, speaking of rapping, I ain't gonna do a freestyle rap for you if that's what you think. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna unwrap some feelings here, because we are about to uh, declare our... Um, I wouldn't say love, but our uh, enchantment of uh, Eileen here. So, without further ado, hello you and welcome to First Snow. Why can't I be more confident than this? My throat feels like it's closing as my nerves get the better of me. And it only gets worse the more I try to speak. Well, that's how you know it's true. If, would, if it was easy to say, it means that it didn't mean a thing to you. It's... I... I am so busy reading Eileen's expression that I lose track of what I'm saying. I try desperately to force something out, but no words come to me. Aw, she's blushing. I think she knows. Looking at her face, though, I don't think the rest needs to be said. We just look at each other silently, the winter snow falling between us. She looks gentle, somehow. Stepping forward, she looks down at my blushing face. From here, I can see the faint red in her cheeks clearly. I can't think of anything else, just... That gentle, calm face that I've never seen her wear before. After a moment's hesitation, Eileen brings her hands forward, grasping my shoulders delicately. Ah, that's sweet! And then, as she leans down, everything stops. I reflexively gasp in surprise as her soft lips press gently to mine, but it ends up stifled. With my body utterly frozen, I find myself completely in the grasp of the girl holding me, her breath tinkling against my face. The sounds, the smells, everything beyond Eileen and I falls from my consciousness. All that's left is this wonderful warm feeling flowing through my entire body. Minutes, seconds, I have no idea how much time's passed, uh, how, how much time passes. I just know that I don't want it to stop. Eventually, sadly, Eileen slips part from mine. Straightening herself as she steps back, Eileen takes a long, shuddering breath as I stare dumbstruck at her wildly blushing face. The feeling of Eileen's lips pressed to mine replaced endlessly in my confused mind, clouding everything else. Eileen, you... The air between us falls quiet, Eileen left waiting for a reply as I stand in a silent daze. Simple shock is one part of it, but far from all. Eileen is not only interested in women, but also in me. I feel like my heart could burst from the relief. It's only now that I see her fidgeting, playing with her hair and un unable to uh, quite stand still. I wonder how long that's been going on, unnoticed. It makes me realize she's, an unfam she's as unfamiliar at the situation as I am. Neither of us know what we're supposed to do or say right now. Here I was trying to explain my feelings when Eileen rushes ahead and does something brash like that. Overcome with my own flood of emotion, emotions and confusion, 
it's Eileen who ends up having to reluctantly move things forward. Sure hope I didn't misinterpret that. Her attempt to play off her nervousness is betrayed by her blushing. I finally realize just why she's so uncomfortable right now. She's left herself vulnerable. It's the first time I've seen her exposed like this, her feelings plain to see. I didn't know you felt that way. I entertained the idea, I guess. Didn't ever think you'd be the one to make the first move. So you will go out with me? No, I just kissed you for the sake of it. <laughs> That's sweet. I guess we're in this thing together now, huh? For all she tries to play things cool, it's obvious Eileen's as awkward about this as I am. The only reply I can muster, and perhaps the only one needed, is to smile. A loud yawn fills the living room, the droning of the television briefly overshadowed. The scene couldn't be more normal. Rose lounging about on the couch watching the morning news, the sounds of traffic outside heading off to work, and me stumbling around pulling on the last of my clothes as the morning's lessons loom. One thing is different now, though. Just thinking about what happened last night makes my heart race. But I have no idea what I'm what's supposed to happen after something like that. What happens when I see Eileen again? How close am I meant to be with her now that we're going out? Then there's the kiss itself, playing over and over in my mind. The feeling of her soft lips on mine, the way she looked so flustered afterwards. A sharp pain from my shin brings me back into the real world. Yeah, I've been there. Bending down to rub my poor leg, revealing the cause to be walking into a chair. The feeling of embarrassment isn't helped by Rose looking over in concern. You are right? Ah, uh, it's nothing. Just bumped my leg. Uh, not, not sick or something, are you? You're even more clumsy than usual today. Did Eileen teach you to kick things? Uh, I'm fine. Just didn't sleep much last night. It's times like this that normally being a morning person doesn't pay off. I shrug off her concern as best I can, distracting myself by throwing on my clothes to prepare for the chill outside. Hmm. Uh, just take it easy, all right? The ice is bad enough out there already. Okay. I will. The walk down the road towards campus does me good, giving time for my mind to settle and get, get back to the daily routine. Not everything is quite the same, though. My footsteps feel light, and what's typically an arduous walk feels unusually easy. I'm not quite dancing in the streets, but the day feels just a little brighter than usual. It's nice. The snowfall's been getting heavier, now that it's December. I pass a few people standing outside buildings while looking mournfully at their roofs, plotting how to dislodge the snow piled on top. The traffic's also slowed to a crawl, rolling by carefully. Ads for Christmas sales on televisions are into full swing by now, which reminds me that I should get my shopping done when I have some free time. I think I can scrape together enough money to buy a little something for everyone in my family. Then there's Christmas cards for my new friends here, not to mention organizing a trip home for the break. Christmas is meant to be relaxing, but it feels like there's so much to organize for it. Coming up to the campus, I try to focus my thoughts back onto school for the time being. Thankfully, the paths here are better cleared, if nothing else. Uh-oh. As students file in past the gate, my heart skips a beat as I recognize a particular blonde girl. 
She looks back and notices me as I skip up to meet her. Her usual tired expression, unwavering. I've never met someone so far from a morning person. Hi. Uh, morning. Allison. Hey, hey, Allison. With that, the both of us begin the walk in side by side. All thoughts of schoolwork leaves my mind as I try to stop myself glancing at Eileen. Fur... Furtively trying... I butchered that. Trying to work out exactly how I'm expected to act around her. Uh, the part where we admit we are interested in each other is also where most of the romance movies I've seen end. And I've never gone out with anyone before. Then there's the fact that neither of us has said a word to the other beyond a quick greeting. I try to comfort myself with the thought that it's probably the same for Eileen too. It's always so hard to read her poker face. Good grief, it's cold today. She's not thinking at all about yesterday, is she? With a long breath, it feels like all my restlessness leaves me. Eileen's relaxed attitude makes me feel embarrassed for getting so worked up after seeing her again. Um... Um, how are you so confident about this, you know, with us going out and everything? <laughs> ah, well, I'm just really good at faking it. Hanging my head, I give up on, er on ever trying to read her. The grin Eileen gives makes me feel better about today in an instant. Her normally cold demeanor, if just for a moment, is pierced by that sincere smile that peeks through. A smile which soon evaporates, collapsing into something else entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, is something wrong? Uh, I just remembered something troublesome. <sighs> Caprice. I almost ask why before the obvious hits me. With my thoughts finally moving beyond the girl at my side, the implications of all this becomes clearer. What? What's the issue? What am I not getting? Did Caprice want to be with Eileen or Allison or why is this an issue? Should we just tell her? I'd rather not. You know Caprice as well as I do. I don't want her to make a fuss about us getting together. Oh, okay. Because she will be all bubbly and happy. Then again, she'll probably work it out herself. She's not stupid. She knows to pay attention if I'm serious. Besides, is there really that much harm in letting her be happy for us? My serious tone in defense of Caprice seems to catch Eileen off guard. It catches me a little off guard too. Okay, fine. Fine. If you're going to tell her, then I want to be there too. Yeah, you should be. The discussion comes to an end, yet I find myself not wanting to leave despite having no further to say in particular. It seems Eileen has the same problem as she awkwardly mills about, the chatting students uh, passing around us only making the silence between us more pointed. Uh, would it be okay to kiss her, here and now? Yesterday in the park we did it without thinking. Eileen's always so awkward about physical affection that I'm not sure she'd like it, especially in public. What I'm thinking must have been plain to see as Eileen reaches down, placing her hand on top of my head and scruffing it around in response. It might be an odd way for her to show her feelings, but I can't say I hate the gesture. I feel my cheeks blushing as her, hands rub as her hand rubs my head, enjoying every moment until the she stops. Eileen's awkwardness around all this makes me feel a little better about my own uncertainty. <laughs> Everything will work out fine, I'm sure of it. Ever the optimist. We'd better get to classes. See you at the club, I suppose. She sure doesn't seem to share my optimism as she waves and walks off. Nor my like of our new club. I'm sure she'll come around, though. With the afternoon wearing on, I trudge up the familiar route uh, to the second floor of the arts building. The sounds of raised voices come from up ahead, easily audible in the otherwise deadly sil dead silent hallway. If I'm not mistaken, they're coming from the art room itself, stealing myself for what's to come. 
Uh, I sigh and head up to the door inside. Eileen and Caprice have already arrived as usual, and they look pissed, both of them, each standing on the opposite side of a table as they fume at each other. Their heads snaps towards me in unison the moment the door rattles on, making my heart skip a beat. Um... I... Uh, yes? Help me talk some sense into this woman, please. Eileen! Just relax! As art club president, I have everything under control. Everything except the club part. I mean, I would have thought a club needed things like official paperwork, an advisor, funding for supplies that haven't been pilfered from the real art classes. Basically, more than an excited proclamation of a club existing. Ah, that's why I'm working on the posters. Priorities here, maybe. <laughs> Feeling sorry for the heavily sighing Eileen, my eyes drift to set posters lying on the table between them. It's decent, but should we be making posters right now? I walk over and tentatively take a look at the one sitting on top, its sharp graphics and color scheme catching the eye. Not really much of a color scheme going on. I mean, it is my colors, so I guess she's got that going for her. Hmm. Um, they do look nice. Thank you. See, people will love him. I may say that, but it's a little obvious this is out of her comfort zone when it comes to art. Her sketching is always nice, but her work with paints comes off as a little crude. Still, trying new things is to be praised. Praise think about this logically. It's nearly Christmas. All the students are going to be on break soon. Even if they weren't, nobody would be looking for a club to join around now anyway. I wouldn't exactly say that. Caprice is quick on the draw as she leans over and latches onto my shoulder, beaming a smug look of victory at her opponent. I feel like I've been re reduced to a useful prop in an argument, but Caprice isn't wrong. Eileen looks physically pained as she groans in frustration. She did rock right into that one. In what could only be interpreted as the universal sign of giving up, she shakes her head and starts to walk away, retreating to the cabinet to grab the things, her things. It looks like posters will be the accomplishment of today as far as the club goes. Uh, I suppose it doesn't hurt to try and draw in some more members. Oh, I thought she was going to talk about drawing some posters and stuff. But draw in some more members. Yeah. Hopefully we can get them soon too. I want to have another club out outing and the more the merrier. And like I declared, we're going to make the pizza place a regular thing for the club. Sure thing. I'm up for it. Eileen looks drearily at the traitor to her cause, but knows her goose is cooked as she hangs her head. I swear she looks more tired than usual. Exactly. Then it's settled. Caprice goes back to fussing over her posters, brushing off some specks of dust that settled on the paint. Taking advantage of the distraction, I look to Eileen. She grimaces as I pointedly flick my eyes back to our companion, plainly ho uh, hoping to leave this for another day by her reaction. Reluctantly, Eileen sets her pain paints down and plots back over like a child accepting their bitter medicine. In hindsight, perhaps she was trying to use her painting as an excuse to not deal with this. Caprice is one of my few friends, however. I'd feel bad for uh, bad hiding this from her. Even if we tried to, she'd just poke and poke until one of us eventually spilled the beans. What's up with you two? Uh, a lot. Especially feelings. Caprice, there's something we need to tell you. To make this absolutely clear, this does not leave the room. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am! I'll bet. Eileen and I have started... I mean, it just happened recently, but... 
Alison is not the best with words. I think we should leave this to Eileen. She seems to be more direct. We're going out. Ah, there we go. I feel Eileen take my hand in hers. I worry for a second about the sweatiness of my palm, but feeling her hand closing around mine settles my nerves. I never realized how warm someone else's hand could feel. As her fingers tighten, I realize something else. Eileen's settling herself just as much as me. Eh? Like dating? So you guys are both... Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> My guess that Caprice wouldn't go too wild turns out to be true, with even her surprise feeling a little exaggerated for effect. Well then, aren't you glad you can do art together all the time now? Look, we don't need any help, much less help from you. Uh, well, you certainly are direct, Eileen. But it's all right. I appreciate what you've done. Just. Don't go too crazy helping things along. Promise? Promise! Sounds like things are lively in here. Oh, there he is. Our gaze snapped towards the doorway. Wallace strolling in with an expression more bored than in the least bit surprised. Eileen's hand let go of mine, but the warmth remains as I reflexively feel my hand with the other to recount the sensation. I'm glad Eileen is a more collected person than I am, calmly playing off the interruption. Ah, everyone is showing up. Just as she's about to greet him though, Millie slides around his large figure and into the room. Is it a double romance? You're looking cheerful today. We just finished our own club work, so we thought we'd pop by. I don't know what happened. The game stalled for a second. Wallace is in the writing club with Millie. He responds to my surprised look with a shrug, clearly trying to avoid setting off Caprice. Only for now. Only until I graduate from this place. I'm not joining this club, no matter how many times you ask. You make it sound like being here is some horrible fate. I smile a little at Eileen suddenly finding some pride in the art club now that someone's spoken against it. Yeah, that's true. As for what I actually came here for, Haley was wanting us to join her for takeout. Who is Haley? Oh, right! Takeout! Lead the way! Millie gives us a polite wave goodbye as Capri skips over to pick up her hoodie on the way out. Are we not going to the takeout? I want takeout. Unfortunately for Caprice, Eileen doesn't let her go so easily. And your club? Uh, today's our club meeting is over. Good work, everyone. Yes, we got a lot done. With a thumbs up from Caprice, the two disappear out the door and head off down the hallway. The three of us are left to our own devices after they leave. While I think Wallace to be a perfectly nice person, I'm still not really sure how to act around him. With just like a normal person, what are you talking about? With Caprice no longer being the center of attention, that familiar self-consciousness I have around strangers flares up once again. It seems I'm not alone in not quite knowing what to say. Wallace and Eileen doing a little more than awkwardly mill around. Given that they're good friends, it makes me think something is going on. I've told her, Wallace, you don't need to keep your mouth shut anymore. Oh, so Eileen was talking to Wallace about the whole romance thing as we were talking to Rose. As he lets out a sigh of relief, it finally clicks. Wait, you knew about Eileen and I? Eileen, yes. Not you, though. Going by the fact this didn't just become intensely awkward, I'm going to say things worked out. Eileen takes my opposite shoulder and shakes me lightly. Seems so. Well, I'm happy for you too. Hope it works out. <laughs> Thanks. Told you I'd find someone who could put up with me. That's not the kind of thing you should say about yourself. Guess I'll get out of your way then. Just take things easy, okay? We will. We give each other our goodbyes before he leaves. 
his unmistakably large figure slowly disappearing down the orange-lit hallway. And then there were two. Huh? Uh, I thought you didn't want to tell anyone. Wallace is different. He knows. I like girls since we were in high school. Hmm. He's known... He's known I like... Oh. He's known I like you for a while now, too. I feel myself blush. The thought that Eileen talked to Wallace about me like that makes me smile. Um, suppose we better head home too, given the club meets over. I guess so. It's an obvious invitation for us to leave together, but I find my feet stuck. I know I'll see her again tomorrow, but... Why? Something's on your mind. Um, I don't really know how to phrase this, but... What happens now? The expression she gives is one of genuine thought rather than judging me for being so lost. It's only now that I wonder if this is actually her first relationship or not. If it is, that makes my confusion a lot more embarrassing. Uh, that's up to you as much as it is me, you know? I guess school has got us for the week, but how about we go for a date on Saturday? Be good to get some use out of the car for once. Oh. Ah, yes, that would be good. Hmm. I mean, uh, yes, let's do that. I can drive us, so just give a heads up once you work something out. As I consider the prospect, I can see a little excitement from Eileen at the idea of going out on our first date, though I doubt she realized it herself. As silence settles in the room, I see my chance. Allison? Oh. Taking Eileen's hand in mine and raise, raise. I'm. It's because all the feelings, like going through what they are going through right now, are rushing back into me too. Playing this, so I'm. I'm a little perturbed here. Taking Eileen's hands in mine and raising myself to my toes, I close my eyes and let my chin push forward. My heart feels to stop. Uh, for a fleeting moment, my lips gently pressing to Eileen's as our hands intertwine. As our lips part and I come back down, my heart makes up for lost time. Come to, th come to think of it, I guess that's the first time I've ever kissed somebody myself. I have to admit, the physical side of us being together is nice, even if it is awkward. I can't help but feel the sensation lingering despite the mo moment having passed. Filling me with warmth. Even Eileen, so normally placid and stoic, looks flushed. The two of us end, end up standing around like complete dorks, the only sound being the trees rustling outside. <laughs> I've been wanting to do that since this morning. <laughs> I swear you're getting bolder by the day. With a gentle smile, Eileen reaches over and rubs my hair. Even if it still don't quite, if I still don't quite know how to react when she does so, I can feel my head leaning into it and a dumb grin spreading on my face. This is cute. With the day uh, wearing on, I let out a badly hidden yawn as I leave the cafeteria. I clutch my bag tightly as I walk, both from the cold and trying not to take up too much space, giving all the people miling about. Yeah, fill up the hallway here. I can't help but eavesdrop on the conversations around me as I walk, the building humming with activity. One conversation from the groups idling about catches my ear, the chatter between some girls about their plans to be with their families again for the holidays. It makes me excited for Christmas all over again. Ooh. I think I know what's about to come up. Eileen isn't doing well with her family, so she's gonna be alone. And we're gonna be stuck between Eileen and our family. As I push through the heavy door and step outside, I wonder if Eileen would be as eager. The fact she doesn't get on with her parents is a worry. But surely they can't be too bad if they're paying for her to live in such a place. For all I enjoy in Christmas, it doesn't sound like Eileen has much reason to. 
A sudden vibration from my pocket grabs my attention, my hand instinctively diving in to pluck my phone out. She hasn't admitted it, but I think Eileen's enjoying playing with her new toy. Huh? What toy? Did we give her a toy? Is it me? Am I the toy? I quickly text her in agreement and hit send as I step off the stairs, dodging a student I nearly bump into as I do. If only I had an extra set of eyes so I could use this while walking more easily. Heading towards the cafe, I muse on how normal things still feel. I'm happy for us being together, of course, yet life goes on. She enters my thoughts more and more these days, but schoolwork, chores around home and the club don't stop. One thing has changed. Uh, uh, one thing has changed through. I feel more sure of myself than ever. Knowing what my own feelings are is oddly liberating. The rush of warmth as I step through the door makes my shoulders slump in relief. Thank goodness for the interior heating being cranked right up. It doesn't take long to notice Eileen sitting alone at a table with her coat and scarf in her lap, coolly staring out the window to pass the time. Walking up, I notice not one, but two coffees sitting on the table before her. Aw, oh, thank you. Hey. Hi, Eileen. Is someone else with you? Eileen's apathetic expression barely changes as she turns to see me sit before her. I'm a little disappointed, but I know her well enough to now to expect it. She's not the type to show her emotions easily. The second's for you. You helped me out earlier with a uh, life drawing, so I wanted to return the favor. It's fine, you don't need to repay me. So that debt was still lingering on her mind, huh? Now that she's bought it for me though, I suppose I can't exactly say no. The coffee proves too hot as I bring it near my mouth, so I settle for blowing on it a bit. Hmm. How's your day been? Good, I mean, normal, I guess. I might, oh, wow. I might think everything's still normal, but my nerves around Eileen haven't quite settled yet. We have only been together a matter of days. I gingerly take a sip to calm myself down before continuing. Hmm. Uh, physics was good, kind of basic right now, but I think we're going to get some interesting stuff next year. So, what are you doing? Mm. Trying to stay awake, mainly. What a day. <laughs> Caprice, you're getting too good at this. I just awkwardly smile. As I do, my eyes drift to the side after noticing a sharply dressed familiar figure breeze into the cafe and up to the counter. Aline follows my gaze, an eyebrow lifting. Oh, it's that mechanic girl. She's appalling with names. She's Millie. You should at least remember who fixed your car. Uh, did you want to talk to her or something? You keep looking at her. What's going on here? Hello? Ah, well, 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 I don't want to annoy her. She might be busy. I barely know her anyways. Eileen looks at me a moment, unimpressed. I used every excuse in the book not to, to not bother Millie too. Then again, I suppose that's the problem. Hey, Millie! Ah, frick, here we go. I shrink in my seat as Eileen's casual calling out across the cafe, taken completely off guard. Millie turns towards the source of her name, giving her usual calm smile uh, upon recognizing us. See? It's not that hard. This is a good opportunity to know her better. Millie takes her coffee as the barista slides it across, across the counter, before strolling over and daintily taking a seat at our table. Good afternoon, Allison. Eileen? Millie? Afternoon. Uh, uh, welcome to Friday. I don't know why they don't do the voice acting for the entire... I don't know. Finally so, yes. Any plans for the weekend? See, Millie talks. 
Eileen and I exchange a brief glance. Both of us are looking forward to plans we made for Saturday, but they're still the day after. Say something, woman. Depends on the weather. On whether or not I'm going to be having a lovely Saturday. I was thinking of heading out to the mountains with Wallace, if it's not too bad. Oh, I thought, oh. As Aline takes a long drink of her coffee, the majestic mountain ranges uh, and foothills around the city floats to mind. They'd be freezing cold this time of year, but she seems to be made of stern stuff. I hadn't taken her to be the outdoorsy type, though. Oh, that sounds nice. Um, hiking? Eileen shakes her head as she sets down her cup. We bought some permits for deer hunting. Oh, lord. Um... Uh, deer hunting? As in killing them? Uh, she stares at me for a moment before looking downward, trying to make sense of the words. I take... It takes an awful long time for her to formulate a response. Well, we don't pet him. Wallace taught me how to shoot down at a range. And I take a loner whenever we head out. What's a loner? That she loans a gun? Is that it? Or is she taking out a loner deer? I don't know. I see. Oh, so... So that's what Wallace gets up to outside the riding club. I did wonder about that. It's nice that they found a way to bond as friends, but I think of a big proud deer lying dead on the grass, covered in blood. You do know how meat goes from an animal into a pretty little package at the supermarket, don't you? Of course I do, but I wouldn't want to personally involve myself at that level. I get that a lot, actually. I hear that from a lot of people. My girlfriend has that too, where she's like, she doesn't mind eating meat. But she doesn't want to cook it because she doesn't want to deal with the fact that this was indeed an animal at some point. Huh. Is that the point of a big day out for them? I have to admit that I'm a little jealous of how they share this whole little world, but I don't think I could ever be a part of it. Millie reads the room quickly as I take another sip of my coffee. Allison. Uh, any plans yourself, Allison? Ah, uh, nothing so exciting. Just shopping for groceries, I guess. Ah, sounds like my weekend plans. I'm the only one of my roommates with a car, so it's easiest if I do the groceries myself. Also, let me eat something, it seems. Look at her face. She's like... Oh. <laughs> Speaking of roommates, what are your thoughts on this new club of caprices? At first, I thought it was just a diversion, but she really does want her art club to work out. She's... She's talked a lot about you two as well, actually. Ah, she spilled the beans, didn't she? Gosh darn it, Caprice, you couldn't keep your mouth shut. Eileen and I look to each other in concern, Millie offering no further explanation beyond an indulgent smile. <laughs> For all I tease her, I am sincerely glad to see Caprice so happy. And you two too. <coughs> she shines brightest when she has something to work on. It's nice to see Millie care so much. They strike me as caring for each other as more than roommates, almost sisters or such. While I still feel the familiar pangs of homesickness from time to time, I'm finally seeing that sometimes family is more than who you grow up with. We all have people around to support us and help in what we set ourselves to doing. <laughs> oh! A ping from Millie's phone rings out, Eileen and I going silent as she hastily, hastily takes it from her coat pocket. Her resigned frown spreading on her face shows it's not good news. Noticing our concerned expression, she soon... She sh Oh my god, I can't talk. She... She soon moves to alley our worries. Jesus. Uh, sorry, I have to go. Affairs in my own club needs attention. <laughs> Affairs like yours. <clears throat> Sometimes I wonder why I do this to myself. Bye. I ask myself that question all the time. Take it easy. Take care. In the snow, it's starting to pile up. Absolutely. I'll make sure to. See you around. The two of us wave 
her off, Millie quickly doubling back to fetch her still full cup and take it with her. A brief silence ensues between the two of us as we sip at our own, the quiet chatter of other students and staff at the cafe providing background noise as we do. Sorry. I'm sorry for being so weird about the hunting, that is. I was shooting my mouth off, forgot you liked animal and that sort of thing. Um, I didn't take you for liking the great outdoors. Being stuck indoors all the time is easy to do when focusing on painting, but it gets stifling after a while. It'd be nice to take a trip somewhere with Eileen, to the mountains or wherever else, seeing the places she likes to go and how it influences her art. Probably, wow, probably, <laughs> probably not to go hunting though. Um, Millie's nice, keeping the riding club going sounds like a lot of work. See, could have never had that nice chat if I hadn't called her over. You could stand to be a bit more social, you know. You're a good person. You'd get on perfectly fine with most. I'm flattered by what she's saying, but I'm not sure exactly how to put that into practice. Without a reply forthcoming, Eileen gives a flustered sigh. Alison, why do you think I joined this dumb club? When she mentions it like that, I realize I never did give her a compelling reason. Caprice and I just pushed it on her until she broke, or at least that's how I understood it. Hmm. I actually thought about joining the existing art club for a while back when they first offered. They seemed interested in me and I was just some bewildered freshman who didn't know anything about at that point. Over time, I realized they didn't give a damn about me. They just wanted my paintings and my skills. I was a trophy for their club, something to be shown off. That was when I gave up on them. So you joined this one because Caprice was better. No, you... <laughs> no. She's the last person I'd do this for. I joined the club for you, Allison. You just wanted to hang out while I did my thing. I liked that. There were no mental games and no need to worry about uh, ulterior motives. I had someone to share my interest with. That's all I really wanted. Worked out pretty well in the end. I got someone to share my love of painting with and thought that maybe the club would help you open up a bit. She joined for my sake as well as her own. I awkwardly fiddle with my cup a uh, coffee cup trying to think of how to reply as my cheeks flush. I don't know what to say. Well, I do. We need to get to class. Raising an eyebrow at the change of top topic, I grab my phone and check the time. God, I'm gonna be late for class again. I really had completely lost track of time while relaxing here with Eileen. I quickly jump up from my seat, pushing it in as Eileen collects her things and swings her coat and scarves around her. Oh! Ah, chemistry just about to start. What class did you have coming up? Mm. Math. All energy dissipates from the situation as I pat her shoulder in sympathy. Hang in there, Eileen. Oh my god. I guess they went to the zoo for uh, for their Saturday date. Hang on a second. I just need to open a window and uh, grab a drink and get my uh, sh uh, hoodie off. It's so warm in here even though it's like freezing outside. Okay, be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I was just getting a little hot and bothered here. Um, the elephant's mighty trumpeting sends a couple of children scurrying away with giggles of laughter, the animal as excited about the small crowd watching on as they are of him. Stepping back from the enclosure and joining Eileen once more, the two of us walk on. Even as we bought our tickets, uh, I'd wondered if coming here during winter was such a good idea. It turned out to be better than I could have hoped. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Um, I've never been here with so few people around. It looks full to me. 
Usually this is a complete madhouse. It's nice. Oh. As we stroll on, Eileen takes my hand in hers as we walk. It's weird how such a simple gesture can make me feel so warm. My cheeks hurting as I smile. I've seen it done in so many romantic movies, but actually feeling someone take my hand in theirs feels so unexpected, unexpectedly comforting. <laughs> You're easy to please. Without any real idea of how to respond, all I can do is keep walking. Maybe I should find it off-putting that Eileen's so calm about this sort of thing compared to me, but I think I might even prefer it. She feels reliable, I think. Level-headed. Crowded or not, it's a nice zoo. Huh? You've never been here before? Considering I've only been in this city since college started, not really. Wait, where do you come from then? Russia. My family immigrated a few years ago, st so still getting used to how things work around here. The question of whether she was a native has genuinely never occurred to me. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. She doesn't have any kind of accent, so I would have never thought of it. If she's Russian, I couldn't tell at all. Hmm. That was a lie. Hmm. Oh. I can't tell if she meant for it to be a joke. Her expression makes it obvious she didn't expect me to actually fall for it. It's too late to laugh now, and I just feel stupid for not questioning her. I'm actually from around here, but moved to Colorado when uh, I was a kid. I never had much interest in zoos. I don't know why it brought me here. Colorado, huh? But why would you come back here? Moved out from my folks' place to make my own path. Have my own home, partner, life, and all that. <clears throat> Sorry. To choose to move so far away from her family, especially to live in her apartment alone, it's hard to imagine, considering how hard it's been for me. Having pro problems with her family is one thing, but jumping stage to get away from them? Left wondering if I should delve into the topic any further, Eileen speaks up as we leave the savannah area. The few people around the zoo seems to be congregating around the eating area ahead. Which is a good sign we should grab some lunch too. Hungry? Ah, uh, just a bit. To be honest, I just need, need a rest. Eileen's pace is unrelenting. Yet she looks fine despite how ragged I am. I don't understand it. I'll go grab something then. Go grab a seat for us before they're all taken and you pass out apparently, would you? Sure thing. Roger. Caprice's speed patterns are rubbing off on you. Perhaps I paused the game. We both share a grimace at the idea before we part. Eileen heading off for the hot food stall uh, ahead as I skip down to one of two unused tables on the outside of the seating area. I practically fall into the hard metal seat, watching the condensation from my breathing rise into the air as I recover myself. If nothing else, at least going out with Eileen will do wonders for my fitness. With several couples in line ahead of her, Eileen crosses her arms and patiently waits. I can't help but let my eyes settle on her as she does. Ever since we've met, I noticed how beautiful she is. Her order made, I'm a little impressed at her managing to bring the sodas and hot dogs over in one trip with some very careful use of her fingers. Oh, Eileen! Oh. Hungry from all the walking, I quickly slide mine towards me uh, as she sets them down and takes a seat. How much was my share? It's fine, don't worry. You already bought my ticket. I said it's fine. Besides, it's nice to dote on someone. I don't know what dote means, but I'm taking it's a good thing. When she puts it like that, it's hard to argue with her. Letting Eileen have her way, I start my, on my food. A loud bird squawks in the distance, disrupting the moment here. Hello? It, it's calls reaching right across the entire zoo, making a ruckus. I've always liked the strange and unfamiliar sounds you get in a place like this compared to the rel relatively quiet of the apartments and the routine sounds of school. As comfortable as Eileen looks, pa packing up her quickly finished hot dogs and soda and pitching them into a nearby bin. I can't quite seem to settle down. Thankfully, she's willing to take charge, given that I have no idea what I'm doing or how to act. Enjoying yourself? Ah, uh, yes! I really need to settle down. 
At least he doesn't seem to be too harsh on me for my nervousness, but it's plainly obvious that this is my first date. That's good. I'm not sure what to make of you when you clam up. I'm just not as used to this as you are. What makes you think that? You've never gone out with someone before? Do I look like I have? I almost blurt out a rather blunt answer. Uncompromising is definitely the word for her, but that doesn't mean she couldn't have had a girlfriend before me. Especially at our age, come to think of it, at least I had the excuse of being a bit shy and focusing myself on schoolwork. Eileen said herself she's known since she's at least high school. Aw, that's sweet. Eileen brings her head down, resting her chin on her arms as they lay on the table. I'm dumbstruck as she looks up at me with those tired eyes of hers. For what it's worth, I'm glad you're my first. You're a sweet girl. Aww. That look she, gi she gives me single-handedly explains why people do all this dating business. For one brief moment, it feels like the two of us are really in sync as we look into each other's eyes. Ah, and there's that bird with the rocks and the disrupting and the whatnot. Can't get a moment's pace here. We were having a moment, Mr. Bird. Only for a moment though, before a small bird suddenly lands onto the table between us, awkwardly and, and rudely. Its head darts this way and that, but it doesn't seem in the least bit shy about parking itself in front of Eileen's startled face. Oh, they did with the fox. Oh, oh, d d welcome, Mr. Bird. It's lovely to have you here. You are always welcome. I didn't know I could have wings, man. Even my excited whispers don't seem to bother the little thing, leading to me gingerly breaking off a little bit of my hot dog bun and trying to feed it. While a little too timid to outright take my take food from my fingers. Have, have you tried pizza instead? I'll be all over that. It seems quite happy to pick at a few sprinkles of bun I leave before it on the table. Eileen seems content to simply watch our little companion. You know what it's actually called? It's orange and white, after all. A blue and white, but close enough. That would make it easy to remember. As the slight... Hey! With the body shaming here. May have put on a few pounds, but... Didn't have to mention it. As the slightly choppy bird busies itself becoming a little choppier, I feel my cheeks hurting from my smiling. I'm glad I can make you smile with my fat ass. You really like animals, don't you? Uh, oops, did I skip something? You really nope. Like I pause a little, but quickly start feeding again. Uh, again, as the bird looks at me expectantly. If our little friend lives around the zoo, it's obvious how it could become so tame. Having apparently had its fill, the bird spreads its wings and flies off at a surprising speed for its way. Hey, will you with the... Hello? Rude. I wave as it goes, my hot dog the worse for wear, thanks to my picking at the bun. Bye-bye. You're a dork. Oh, moments like that are so sweet. When you can have these little, like, jabs at each other with a smile and a, and a cute look in your eye. I laugh off her jab before returning to our conversation. It was hard when I left, yeah. I have a new family now though. You, Caprice, Rose and everyone else I've met at college. Yeah, a real family. Disappointingly, Eileen looks rather skeptical at the idea. Then again, she doesn't seem to get on that well with anyone besides Wallace and I. Um, I was always an optimist, I guess. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe some of it will rub on, rub off on me. Aline picks herself up from the table, giving a big stretch as she does. For a moment, we just look at each other, simply appreciative of the fact that we're here together. Yes, please, more people do this. Just, just take a take a breather and just enjoy the moment you're in. Look around you and be like, wow. 
I I'm here. I get to do this and with the with the peoples and the whatnot. Allison. Yes. Huh? Oh yeah. As she picks herself up a little off her chair in order to lean across the table, it becomes obvious what she's doing. She's taking a bite out of my hot dog. Relaxed enough to let her get away with a quick peck, I close my eyes and lean forward a little in anticipation, my heart beating just a little bit faster. As the feeling of her tongue hits my cheek, my body suddenly freezes up as a, as a shiver runs down my spine. I hear myself give a weird startled gasp before I reflexively fall back into my chair. Eileen looks rather nonplussed as she settles back into her own chair, her eyes studying me as she does. Oh! Well, what was that? Uh, you just had mustard on your cheek. <laughs> and I was maybe bullying you a little. I feel my face flower into a wild blush as I grimace at her. Partly for her betrayal after my expectation of an affectionate gesture here. And partly for startling me so badly. I don't know quite how to read Eileen's interested expression, but I don't care to ask as I sulk. I am genuinely a little mad at her. Come on. It's just a cute little moment. Don't be mad. But I don't think it's getting through. I'm still not used to the physical side of all this. Ah, oh, okay. Makes a little more sense then. Letting out an amused snort. Oh, we're back to the snorting. And picking herself up from her seat, Eileen dusts herself off. How long have we been sitting here? If you need to dust yourself off and get ready to go. <laughs> Come on, Miss Pouty Lips. Let's get moving before the weather goes bad. As Eileen closes the door to the apartment, I let my coat drop to the floor as I collapse over the back of her couch in exhaustion. How this girl can keep such a pace for a whole day is totally beyond me. Even now, she doesn't seem too bothered. The only sign she's tired at all being some stretching after she takes off her scarf and coat. Haven't collapsed on me, have you? <sighs> I'm dead. You can have my stuff. Better check before digging the grave. Remember how they used to do that? Sticking a big pin in into a toe to see if they woke up from the pain. Jesus, ow, I can imagine. Oh. Ah, look at that. I'm suddenly alive. Yep, <laughs> me too. It's a Christmas miracle. As she busies herself behind me, my eye is drawn to her entertainment cabinet that the television's sitting on. Where? With curiosity getting the better of me, and perhaps to distract my wandering mind, I walk around the couch and press at the right door to pop it open. Is it just me or am I not seeing what she's talking about? I'm hardly surprised that the movies inside are all perfectly organized, but the genres she's, she's collected are strange. You want a coffee or something while you rummage through my stuff there? I'm not rummaging, I'm just, you know, rummaging. I try to think of another word to describe what I'm doing, but it doesn't take long to realize Eileen's right. Looking like a kid caught with the hand in the cookie jar as she walks back over, I try to change topics. Um. Uh, do you really like westerns or something? Oh, you should see other people then. They're all either those or documentaries. Sorry to disappoint, I just like westerns. Can't beat a niche. Or a not. <laughs> Can't beat a nice, simple plot with a good guy drifting into a town, getting one over on the bad guy and walking into the sunset. Nice landscapes, too. Sure. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> Westerns. Yeah. Something feels off as we stand around in her apartment and chat, but it's hard to put my finger on it. The silence, uh, silences are just a little too long. The chatter nothing more than the small talk we usually never needed. Here we are, the evening after a date and filling in time milling about in her quiet apartment. Even the usual background noise of passing cars and busy tenants I hear around my home are nowhere to be heard. Just the two of us shuffling about alone. The thought of sharing a night with Eileen has passed my mind more than once, even if I tried to distract myself from it. Is it too early? 
Would she think I'm weird? I don't even know how you even bring that up. Without any real reason to, I idly fiddle with Eileen's movie collection and read off the covers to seem occupied. You know, our date doesn't have to end now. As her words trail off, my heart freezes. Her stoic face only makes this worse. My brain freezing between bashfulness and shock at her being so blunt. We've only started dating, but the thought of sleeping together had passed my mind. Let's left spluttering about. I awkwardly turn away to hide my expression. Um. Um. Do you want to watch one of them together? Do what you want. I'm going to take a shower. Right, I'll just get a drink. No! Why not go? We... Okay. I would call, it, call that a missed opportunity. But then again, they have only been dating for a couple of days. Well, she's seen me naked. Should return the favor here. As she leaves, I wander over to the kitchen and grab a glass, pouring some orange juice for myself. Wow, fancy. To try and refocus, my heart still racing, the thought of what Eileen suggested still playing on my mind. I wonder if I should really be letting Eileen take care of so much. She doesn't seem to mind at all, but that's not really the problem. Even now, she suggested we do what I did want to try, and I couldn't even bring myself to just accept. I want to get closer to her, but it feels like everything's happening at her pace. Then again, Eileen's not the only person in my life I've let dote on me while I go with the flow of others. The door from the bathroom opens as I set down the now empty glass, but the words are stolen from my mouth as I walk over to talk with her. Allison? Oh! I don't, uh, were you getting close? Sorry! My, fa my face burns hot as I stammer out the uh, well, literally stammer out the words because I can't talk, but she only steps closer. She takes my hands to stop me from moving away, holding them softly. Her face is so close to mine, I can feel her breathing. Her eyes look into mine, questioning. Suddenly, the thought of even a kiss makes my head light. All I can do is nod a tiny nod, which is enough for her to close the distance, kissing me more deeply than she ever has before. My heart races as her tongue touches mine, teasing it just a little before pulling back. I can hardly breathe by the time we separate, left clutching my chest and taking a deep breath to try and regain myself. It looked like you didn't get it, so I decided to be more blunt. I passed out. With our excitement over, the two of us had a shower to clean up before settling in for the night. See? I picked up on the thing. Ah, oh, that's sweet. Enveloped in a soft, loving warmth as Eileen cuddles me, I almost want to nod off already as she gently strokes the back of my head. Given how she, how cold she can be towards others, it's a real surprise she's so physical in, physically intimate. I have to admit that I like this side of Eileen, snuggling into her body as I think so. I'd forgotten about that in all the excitement. It'll be nice to see everyone again, but there's a pang of disappointment that I can't be with Eileen more. You'll be going to stay with your family, right? Yeah, Colorado's not bad, so at least it'll be a nice change of scenery. It'll be nice to see my sister again too. As Eileen thinks about her faraway family, I'm reminded of my own. I've been excited to go back home for the holidays for weeks now, but with her gone... Are you okay? I'll be fine. I just wished I could go with you. Sorry? As a plan forms in my head, I try to summon the same strong will she and Caprice have.
Okay, we are moving a little bit fast here. We're already gonna spend the holidays together. I mean, not that I'm against it. It's just you've been dating for less than a month or uh, less than a week even. Eileen looks unsure of what to say. I wonder if she's trying to decipher if I'm making a serious suggestion or not. Even I don't know. And you talk about me going fast. Didn't you want to see your own family really badly? I, I do, but they won't be back home right away. I'll go back before Christmas. I just... I don't want to be alone until then. She looks taken aback. I suddenly find I'm actually arguing for this instead of merely voicing a whim. I'm not really sure about this. You've never been outside the city, let alone the state. Then there's the fact that you'll be in a house full of strangers. I coped with moving into Rose's apartment, and I'll be with you. After how much you've helped me until now, I'm sure I'll be fine. She tries to stare me down, but I've managed to find an internal willpower in some corner of myself I didn't know existed. Eventually, thankfully, Eileen lets out a long, tired breath. As I snuggle into her warmth with a grin of victory, Eileen silently smiles as she pats my head once more.